the living word would prophet Isaac prosper of the excellent beauty nation at the city of wonders. Praise God. It's good to be here. And we thank God. Amen. Somebody say it sometime. I don't like to work with speed. Then I met someone again and I told them. I said, I like working under pressure. How many people don't like to work under pressure? Just be honest. Okay, you don't like. <laughs> Sorry, I've lost. I've lost. Because sister. <laughs> that is true. Ah, you don't. You cannot push her. Hey, she takes her time. I think I will not now read the scripture since you've put up your hand. <laughs> Who else? You don't like working under pressure. Just be honest. My sister is there. Who else? Who else? Uh -huh, Ruth is there. What's your name? Patricia. Who else? You just don't like to work under pressure. Even you? Who else? Who else? Uh, Joshua. You're quiet today. Do you like working under pressure? <laughs> so, double. Can I read for a script? I promise you will not get annoyed. Please promise. It will change you. Proverbs 24, verse 10. I read it today. I said, what? This script I've never seen in the NLT version. I just want to read that one. It's not part of the sermon. Praise God. Proverbs 24, verse 10. We shall see whether what I'm saying is true or no. Proverbs 24, verse 10, NLT version. Read it. The Bible says, if you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. Now, I did not mean to abuse anyone. Ah, don't read it again. Don't. Don't, don't read it again. Don't. Don't read it again. Then it's praise the Lord. Do you like pressure? <laughs> Ruth, do you like pressure? You don't like it? <laughs> okay, read it again. Because now she doesn't like. Esther, do you like pressure? <laughs> he said, let me read for you. If you fail under pressure, that means you don't like working under pressure, right? That means if they ever put you on pressure, what will happen? You fail, isn't it? Now, this is what the Bible is saying. If you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. Now, no, I believe God, you know, I was reading it and I said, there must be people like this at church that God wants to help. Now, working under pressure, is it good? Let's define it. What do you think is under pressure? When you organize things on time and you're doing it on your time, that's not under pressure. Isn't it? These are the people who say, why don't you inform me early? I don't like working under pressure. <laughs> you get the point? Yeah, I was just having Bible study and I was, I was blessed. I said, God Almighty, just imagine. God has said, go to Capturo now. He did not tell you last week. God, I don't. God, why didn't you tell me in advance? But then you still go. You say, anyway, let me go. But I don't like working under pressure. These things of pressure, I don't like. <laughs> you tell me at the beginning of the month, Minister Mark, that this is where we are going to Kampala. We are going here. We are going so that I organize my giving. The thing, I don't like working. <laughs> what you need to do is to step up your strength. Because you cannot dodge pressure. Some versions call it adversity. I just brought pressure because pressure is a common word. Amplified says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is too small. Message version. If you fail, if you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much strength to you in the first place. 
So you saying I don't like working it's actually because you would, you were not prepared to have the strength. Praise God. These guys are going to be very strong after today. I also just wanted to know who are those so that I know how to handle them. Now I know where this where to put the strength. Praise God. Okay, now let's read where there is strength. Proverb. Let's continue. Verse, I believe. Verse. Let's go back to verse 6, I think. Verse 6. King James. Are you there? Ah, uh, from verse number... You want these people? Yes, sir. The title of my sermon tonight is Increasing in Knowledge. Amen. We are dealing with that, alright? Yes, yeah, and one of it is to how to manage crisis. Pressure. Okay? Be thou not envious against the evil man, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studies destruction and their lips talk of mischief. Verse 3. Through wisdom a house is built by understanding is established and by knowledge shall, be, shall the chambers be filled with all pre precious and pleasing riches. Amplified. Verse 4. And by knowledge shall it is chambers of every area. Be filled with all precious and pleasing and riches. And verse 5 says, let's read. A wise man is strong and is better than a strong man. And a man of knowledge increases and strengthens his power. Did you see that? Okay, look at that from the message. You just pick something beautiful. Verse number 5. It is better to be wise than strong. Intelligence outranks muscle any day. Look at verse 6. Strategic planning is the key to warfare. To win, you need a lot of good counsel. Verse 7. Wise conversation is the way. Over the head of fools, in a serious discussion, they haven't a clue. The person who's always cooking up some evil, soon gets a reputation as prince of rogues. <laughs> Fools in combat scene. Then verse 10 now tells you if you fail. So you see it's beginning from a place of knowledge. In verse number 4, verse 3, it takes wisdom to build a house and understanding to set it on a firm foundation. It takes knowledge to furnish its rooms with a fine furniture and beautiful draperies. In verse 5, it is better to be wise. Praise God. Look at that from the NLT. Through knowledge, it is rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. Verse 5. The wise are mightier than the strong. And those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger. So then now when you come to verse 10, you say, if you fail in a time of pressure, your strength is too small. But he said, through knowledge, you go from strength to strength. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So crisis is good because it determines our strength. That means I need to have knowledge that will make, him, make me even more stronger in time of crisis. So I'm strong. Look at Isaiah. Read Isaiah 40 verse 31. 40 verse 30. Even you verse 9, verse 29. He gives power to the weak. He gives power to the weak. And strength to the powerless. And strength to the powerless. Even youth. Even youth will become weak. Will become weak. And tired. And tired. And Why? Because of the crisis. Because of the pressure. Because of the challenges. And with a youth, a man who is depicting a strong man. Because youth excel in strength. Amen. Amen. Come on. And Even the youth will become weak and tired. And the young man will fall, in, will fall exhaustion. in exhaustion. Verse 31. But those who Come trust on. In the Lord but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Will find new strength. You see, so there is something high. called finding new strength. Amen. You can find that new strength. You know what you're going to do when there's pressure? 
Huh? <laughs> My people, what do you do? You speak in tongues. Amen. That's where you get the strength. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You, you know, say, so, okay, this is difficult, but I will step in. I've never done this in life, but I will step in. I know the way. These are times of refreshing. Lika baratabaya. Lesusho bragadesh. The reason why that time comes is because God wants you to be a good manager. Amen. And besides, it comes to lift you. Every time you say, I don't want, you're refusing another level. It says, by knowledge, the house will be filled with every precious, riches, and valuables. Praise God. Amen. Okay. Do you still love me? Yes, sir. <laughs> good. So don't say again, I don't like walking under pressure. Just receive strength. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And don't say, I like walking under pressure. <laughs> okay? Walking under pressure and not walking under pressure is not anything. The most, the most important thing is increasing in strength. Amen. When pressure comes, I adjust. Yes, I showed you something on Sunday. How you can adjust like a tree of Lebanon and rather the palm tree. Praise God. Amen. God does not want any child of his to fail. He doesn't want. He doesn't want us to fail. So I'm not a failure. I'm not a failure. Say it again. I'm not a failure. Praise God. Amen. There was one. I wish I could get it for you. Look at verse 16. Amplified. For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked are overthrown by calamity. When pressure comes for the wicked, ha, they give up. See? Praise God. See, the righteous man may fall seven times. But they rise again. Pressure never destroys us. Crisis never eats us up. Problems never finish us. Because we have strength in the problem. Paul says, when I'm weak, I am strong in him because of his grace. I cannot do it, but by the ability of God, I can carry on. Come on, put your hands for Jesus. Yeah. Increasing in knowledge is very important. If you're never increasing in knowledge, brother, you're very smart today. Beautiful. If, if you don't increase in knowledge, certain things will bypass you. You cannot be the first man in the village to construct a good house and never maintain the best standards. Have you ever found those people? I was the first man to build a house. I was the first man to buy a good... I was the first... I was the, I was the, but you never maintain a standard. It's a disrepute for me to buy a very nice car. No one has ever bought it. The first car ever. And I never maintain the status. It's a Mercedes, but it's a DMC. He doesn't carry weight. Say, so God forbid. Are you listening? So you increase in knowledge. Some of you are very good at business. Maybe three years ago, you were selling second-hand clothes. All right? And now God has advanced you. There was a lady who was in campus selling clothes, second-hand clothes, second hand clothes and she was making a lot of money but as people advanced and exited campus and also she, she exited campus she went back with the second hand clothes to the bank the bank could not buy them that is not his new standard I wish you were getting it now so when the banker arrives there you don't bring the second hand clothes because now the money in his pocket cannot afford the second hand is too cheap. So what do you do? You climb the ladder. Now go for first hand clothes. Have the second hand. Very good. But maintain the clients you have ever gotten. That's why we keep adjusting. When we discovered God is giving us students, we adjusted. It was okay, first service, every first, first Sunday. We are adjusting. Knowledge is power. You stick with your small and then, you know, things will bypass you, my friend. 
to bypass you. <laughs> Glory to God. So I increase in knowledge. Someone read. Read, read for me. Second Peter. Three verse. Second Peter 3.18. We see something. Second Peter 3.18. But grow in grace. But do what? Grow in grace. But grow in grace. Undeserved favor. Come on. Spiritual strength mm -hmm. and recognition mm -hmm. and knowledge mm -hmm. and understanding mm -hmm. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look at that. He says what? But grow in grace. If you look at the behind part of that, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I wish you could get this somebody. Ah. From verse 10, NLT version, let me read for you for this very first. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpected as a thief, that the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. Yesterday I had a very terrifying dream. I dreamed that we were left only one day. I said, God Almighty, not even a year. Then I woke up. I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> Verse 11. Since everything around is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along, hurrying it, making it happen. On that day he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. Verse 13. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. Amen. Say amen somebody. Verse 14. And so dear friends, while you are waiting for these things, what things? The new heavens and the new earth. The melting of the first heavens and the passing away of the first. The earth will die. That's what he's saying. The earth, they will bury the earth. This one, where you bury people, they will bury it one day. Are you listening? He said, while we look, while we look, while you are waiting for the things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Say amen. Verse 15. And remember the Lord's patience. Remember the Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our, Lord, our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of the things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different. You see that? They bombard themselves with doctrines they cannot understand. And all that they are doing is they are running around and trying to preach something else. Just as they do with other parts of the scriptures. And this will result in their destruction. I am warning you ahead of time, dear friends. Be on God. So that you will not be carried away by the errors. He said, I'm warning you so that you know what? Be carried away by the errors of these wicked people. And lose your own secure footing. In Hebrews 13 verse number 9. He begins to tell you the same thing. He says, it's not good for the to be, you know. Establish on myths, other doctrines. He said it's good for the heart to be established with by grace. So he says here, I'm warning you so that you're not carried away by these errors of these wicked men. And then he says, Rather, you must grow in grace and knowledge. The knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to Him, both now and forever. And everyone says, Amen. Glory to God. Now, the word there where he says grow in grace, but grow in grace. So he's giving a background of how error is perpetuated. How it's everywhere on rubbish. And then he says, but as for you, grow. As for you, grow. Don't worry about what's happening in the world. As for you, grow. There is a certain knowledge we must be grown in. It's the knowledge of our God. And Savior. Praise God. Look at another one. In verse 1 there. Go back to chapter 1. 
verse number 3. Praise God. Chapter 1 verse number 3. By his divine power, mm-hmm. God has given us verse everything. One, verse 1, verse 2 rather. Verse 2, amplified. May grace, God is favor and peace, which is perfect, perfect well-being, all, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity and freedom, from fears and aggravating passions and moral conflicts, be multiplied. Say amen. Be multiplied to you in the full person, precise and correct knowledge of God. He says, even for grace to be multiplied in your life, you need knowledge. So that you know, where is this grace going? Grace is not going to be multiplied in your life just. Grace is not going to be increased just. That's why he says, but grow in grace and knowledge. When he says grow in grace and knowledge, that word and is the word used to mean the grace that comes by knowledge. Or the knowledge that leads to the truth. Remember somewhere he says, but grace and truth came by Jesus. The grace that comes by truth or the truth that leads to grace. And we beheld the glory as the only glory of the begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. That word and again is the word that is used to mean grace that leads to truth or truth that leads to grace. But grow in grace and knowledge. Grow in grace. Last week we started about living a life of favor. Now that favor can increase. By knowledge. He said by knowledge the chambers of the house will be filled with every present precious riches and valuables. You can discover grace today. Specific grace to purify your life. You can discover grace to make you strong. He tells his son Timothy. Paul in 2 Timothy 2 he says be thou strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That grace will help you to live a life of a soldier and you're not complaining. You live a life of an athlete you're not complaining. You're waiting for the fruit like a farmer who has sown his seed and you're not complaining. You don't fall in trouble and remain in it. You rise again. Say I'm rising after today. All you need is more strength. And that strength is more knowledge. He said a wise man increases in strength. You cannot. How, how do you connect that? I thought you can increase in strength by eating food. By doing enough exercise. <laughs> by going to the gym. And someone says, okay, wait for me. Wait for me after three weeks. I'll come and lift you. <laughs> Of course, grace can lift a man. Now you need to get his knowledge. Great life, but how? By knowledge. Accurate knowledge. The knowledge of God. Praise God. Say, so grace is increasing my life. So you need to be specific. What kind of knowledge am I increasing in? Every time you read information, it comes with knowledge. It comes with skill. Everything you read comes with knowledge. We are in a school every day. Every day we are in a school. You must learn something. But what kind of knowledge is entering you? Does it bring an addition to grace? Does it increase and improve your status? Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah whereby you want to get some information and you cannot get it. Now when you get that knowledge you can be sure you're secure. And the child Jesus grew in wisdom. He grew. He advanced. But the word he uses here in Second Peter is oxono. That which gives increase. Oxono. It's like a seed. You put one bean seed. Then you collect 50 bean seeds at the end of three months. That which gives increase. Without you understanding how did this seed multiply. That's grace. Grace is not meant to be understood. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. In Romans 5, it says in a message version, if it is grace and the law in a rest, grace wins. You understand? Credentials, protocols, principles, vis-a-vis -vis -vis grace. You win by grace. However, to do all these things by grace. Yet other people have gone to colleges, you know, theology, they have divinity in what? Masters in divinity, degree in theology. But they can't do what we are doing. It says if it's the law and grace, grace wins. You know, I'm teaching you something very simple, but you're going to fly. This knowledge must enter you. Knowledge is a power. You've been in school and you've seen that big textbook. Education is the key. It's true. Be educated. Education is civilization. A civilization is acquisition of knowledge. Job in 21 of us, 22, I beseech you, acquaint thyself with God. Acquaint thyself with God. And Paul prays for the church in Ephesus. He says, I pray that God increases your inner strength to receive the capacity to entertain a higher knowledge. <laughs> to receive the capacity. Because sometimes the brain is too small. So we need another dimension of thought. The knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happens if you take my boy to university? I'm telling you, his head will burst. Unless it's by the spirit, he can accommodate. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pray that, they, you, say, you, say, that you may be endued with strength, kratos, might, and power. In your inner man by the Holy Ghost. And says that Christ may dwell in your heart. You need some amount of energy to receive the kind of knowledge we receive. Praise God. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. And then he says that, and you may come to comprehend. You see? Katalambana Sagavoda. Take a hold of and say, this is my possession. He palakata, compelled by it. Anakazo, compelled and forced to do it. You know, when knowledge begins to force you to do it, when there is nobody, it is just available knowledge that you know. You cannot even lift one, one, one just one, make one, one step. You cannot. H have you? Kiato Vala, Sivom Bam 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 Bam. God can, you know, this knowledge is everywhere. Simple as it is. Simple as it is. Compelled by, when knowledge comes to you, whatever thing you do, control it to it, you'll be guilty. You'll be guilty. You feel, but I know it. No one has, to, but I know it. I know this is the right thing. The joy shall be delivered by knowledge. That's why knowledge is the power. The more you get knowledge, the more you escape the trap of the enemy. Libasata. Your mind is going to expand after today. And your spirit's capacity to receive is going to another level in the name of Jesus. Mana, 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 moko. Ha ha! I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. There are certain things you do and you feel unless I hit this mark I cannot receive the bell. I cannot receive the result. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith and be able to comprehend what is the depth. I now want the depth. I've been hearing about love but I want the depth of it. How deep can it go? How high? You see? And then he says how wide and how breadth. Then he comes to that point where he says that Passes knowledge. And, and you know, and then he said, uh, understanding the love of God that passes gnosis. 
knowledge of man. Knowledge of class. Scientific knowledge. What men know about it, I am passing it today. I am going beyond the senses. There is a higher knowledge of God. Libaranda. <laughs> There is Gnosko. There is Gnosis. There is Epignosko. There is knowledge increasing in the Epignosis. <laughs> my son, Philemon, he says, I pray, and this is my prayer, that you may acknowledge every good thing that is in you. But he says, the communication of your faith may become effectual. You will be productive by knowledge. He says, you begin to, to, to to share and communicate. The effectual communication of your faith, your faith may become. It says that your faith will begin to communicate if you begin to acknowledge every good thing that is in Christ. And that word acknowledge is the word epignosis. Knowledge, higher knowledge, knowledge of the just. Knowledge of angels. Knowledge of God. That is the knowledge by which God in the human form, Jesus, looked at the wall. And he said there is a door in that wall. That is knowledge. Ah, dear God. That is the epignosis of the spirit. Increasing in the epignosis. It comes when you get the truth. That is when you increase in epignosis. When you discover knowledge. When you discover the truth. Yeah. When you discover the truth. Are you listening? When you discover the truth. That is too high knowledge. For a fool. Even if it's just one truth like this. Aya. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. That is the knowledge I'm talking about. <laughs> knowledge in the gospel. Shut up. You can just sit and say, what, what truth lies behind tongues? Then you sit on it. Then you discover, I am talking to angels. You mean there's an angel here? Zevaronto believer agato. Ebalatapaya. Ropakida. Ezopreida palizo. ah. ah. <laughs> One truth like this. Listen, when you meet knowledge, you must be free. You must be free. For example, the Bible says, when you meet perfect love, it doesn't have bondage. No bondage. Perfect love casts away. Love casts. Love. Eh? Love the one you're mentioning, L-O-V-E. Becomes a person and casts away demon without you saying go Genda Love perfect in love casts away a demon. That's knowledge. We must learn to cultivate the presence. The presence. The presence of God. <laughs> ah, perfect love costs, costs away fear and this is what he's telling us grow you know that knowledge the love of God know the love of God that passes all knowledge and then he said that you may be filled with the fullness of God now unto him that is able to do exceedingly now there you can do anything when you increase in knowledge, my friend, have you ever met a man who, who can repair a speaker? He can repair a PC. He can repair, he can repair a phone. He can repair a watch. You begin to get envious. You cannot kill him. You cannot steal it. It is here. If just mere quoting scripture can make someone get annoyed, how much more if those scriptures begin to work? <laughs> Can I tell you something? No one truth today and bind yourself to it. Well, you know, this is my this is my secret. This is my truth. 
My truth is when I sit down and I read the Bible, I understand. My truth is when I get the Bible and I begin to speak in tongues, I fly. My truth is, is I win someone's I win soul to Christ. You know, when you discover that knowledge, no one can beat you. He said, by that knowledge, you make your life beautiful. Increasing in knowledge. Praise God. Let me read for you something again. <laughs> We're in the days of knowledge. Daniel 12 and verse 4. Daniel 12 and verse 4. Read King James. Daniel 12 verse 4 says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words. Shut up the words. And seal the book. And seal the word. Even the to the time of the end. Come on. Many shall run to and fro. Come on. And knowledge shall be increased. Ah, uh, Knowledge shall what? Shall be increased. Say amen. Amen. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say amen. Amen. Say knowledge. Knowledge shall be increased, shall be increased in the last days. In the last so days. we are increasing in knowledge. We are increasing Shout in knowledge. amen. Amen. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. We shall come back to Daniel 20, uh, 12. Praise God. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as words of a book that is sealed. He said seal up the book until the time of the end. Right? He said, it's like a book sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, now this is by Gnosis, all right? Now this is by the common knowledge. You went to university, come and read the things. <laughs> Have you seen those people? Yes, Whereby they just shock you one day and say, you, you went to school, come and read this. And you also don't know what you're reading. And that's what Isaiah is saying. It's a vision. <laughs> Praise God. He says, deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. Because that's what Daniel just says. He said, you Daniel, seal up the book. Don't try to read it to know. For it's for the end time. Which means, it is waiting for a season, times of refreshing. And no ends up. No, no, that's the power of that, that's a part of seasons. So when I'm bringing another season, when God is giving us another season, just a week to go, not even a week, around five days, you understand it's opening a vault of power. Some knowledge that is hidden somewhere. In Matthew 4, he says, whatever was hidden was hidden for one reason, to be revealed. But when? In the time of the end. Ah. Verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Okay, you, you as the spirit, come here. He's saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, Apana, I am not learned. You tell those who have gone to university. I don't have a passport. Anyway, verse 13. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me, with their mouths and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart from me. And their heart and the fear towards me is taught by the people, by the priesthood of men. You see, is that they, they were paying attention to men's wisdom. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work. Say amen. Among these people. Even a marvelous work. Say amen. And a wonder. Say amen. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. He said, brethren, for you know your calling in the Lord. You know that not many noble, not many wise men, according to the flesh, not many mighty, according to we are called. Amen. Amen. But God chose the so-called weaklings, the so-called they don't know. Amen. And then exalted his revelation in them. Hallelujah. I just picked a poor boy in the village there and said, you come, come and prophesy. <laughs> Yet they were very eloquent people who were already having degrees in, in theology. He just said, come and prophesy. Come and prophesy. Come and prophesy. Come and prophesy. Come and sing. From some deep village in Anyara there. Just come and prophesy. 
I wish you were getting this. Some of you, when we begin to talk about where you come from, you thank God. You have a reason to pray. You have a reason to thank God. That's what we call grace. So I will shame the wisdom of the wise. Ha! I wish you could get this. Ha. My grandfather migrated from somewhere and came and stayed amid his, you know, strangers. He was born alone in their family. Not knowing much. Then they gave birth to my father. Then my father gave birth to seven of us. Now, just imagine that family. And then God says, you, go and serve God. Ha. Some things we look at and we thank God. We'll be like, God, where could I have been? Where, where, where could I have been? If it was not you. David said, if the Lord but me, I would be silent in the grave like this, not talking up. <laughs> Serve God. Eh? Amen. Serve God. Alright, let's continue. And he says, where are we? Verse number 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their cancer from the Lord. And their works are in dock. And they say, who see it us? And who knows us? I'm telling when you increase in knowledge, you know everything. Yeah. Verse 16. Surely, your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made him, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. He said, God knows you. Uh, he has a plan for you. Amen. Verse 17. Is it not yet a very little while? And Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. You saw that, right? He's talking about the pouring of the Holy Ghost. And a fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. The same thing he told us. Trees of righteousness. Amen. Verse 18. And in that day, which is that day? It is the last days. Whereby it says, you Daniel, seal up the book. For the understanding and the knowledge of this is for the, the end time. Now we have arrived there. Look at what is happening. I wish you could get this somebody. Amplified. Verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. The book which even those who were having ears could not hear. Now a deaf man can hear. I prophesy upon you in the name of Jesus. Let a shift come in your world. It says even if you're not able to hear, just because it's the season, Lakatabaya. The keeper. Knowledge. Days of high knowledge. Increasing knowledge. He said, but grow in grace and knowledge. Oxono. That which gives increase. I have understanding. I have wisdom. I am knowledgeable. I have the spirit of knowledge. You see, if you understand it that way, there is nothing that will bypass you. Suddenly you'll be aware of certain things. And you know, you know it's beautiful when you know things. Eh? Have you ever found a bright man? And he, he knows no man knows the thing. They will call him. That's how I live my life. I just know they will call me. This thing, I know it. Man of God, did, 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 did pray for me this and this and this. Okay, you come to church. Then they first run away after two years. The man of God, the other thing is still there. They come to church. Until they come back. I, I have the key. He said the trouble with the Pharisees is they had the key of knowledge. But they, they hid it. Now we have the keys of knowledge. That knowledge vault is open in the name of Jesus. Yes. Certainly, a certain intensity, a gravity of knowledge. para. You will know things. Praise God. He says you will know the truth. You shall know. That word as you shall is definite. Which means it's going to happen. 
is a verdict from the court of heaven. You shall. I have knowledge. I know all things. Praise God. Say, I know all things. He said, you have an unction from on high. And you know all things. And that all things is the truth when you read from verse 18. First John 2. When you read from you have an unction from on high. And you know all things. So don't worry about these guys who masquerade with fake doctrines. You know all things. The living one lives in you. Somewhere he says, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's knowledge. Now how about if you don't know that there is somebody greater in you? Something will just chase you. He said the wicked are chased even by no one. The wind is just whistling. Shh. And it's, ah, there's a snake. Hi-ya! You look at that knowledge. It's called absent of knowledge. <laughs> but a wise man says, wait a minute. Mm, that, is, that, that is wind. Don't worry. <laughs> Say so increase in knowledge. So knowledge is power. You can't be timid. No one can intimidate you. People need to move forward, but you have the knowledge. You have the counsel. You see Elif- this guy called Elihu in the Bible? He just kept quiet. He said, you guys, I thought knowledge would talk, experience. Just keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. And the Bible says he was like, a, 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 you know what, a vent without a pipe. You're just pumping, pumping, and swelling, swelling. At one moment, he exploded. He said, no! There is a higher knowledge. There is a higher life. And when he spoke, all those guys got silent. God is preparing you for that time. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He said, don't fear. When you're brought before a place and the words are too heavy, you will have the accurate answer. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is right there to give you the words. Praise God. Look at verse 19. Verse 18, Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29, verse 18. It says, And in the day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and out of obscurity and gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek also shall increase in their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice and exult in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one, the Assyrian army, shall come to nothing, and the scoffer shall cease. And all those who watch for iniquity, as an occasion for occasion, shall be cut off. Those who make a man an offender, and bring condemnation upon him with the word, and lay a trap for him, who upholds justice as the city gate, and throws aside the innocent, truly the righteous, with an empty plea. Therefore says the Lord, who redeemed Abraham out of Ur and idolatry concerning the house of Jacob? Look, he said, Jacob shall not be ashamed. Say amen. amen. Not then shall his face become pale with the fear and disappointment because of his children's degeneracy. For when he sees his children walking in the way of piety and virtue and the work of my hands in his midst, they will revere my name. They will revere the whole one of Israel, of Jacob, and reverently fear the God of Israel. Say amen. amen. Those who err in the spirit will come to understanding. Amen. And those who mama discontently will accept instruction. Something is going to happen. Amen. You see, when knowledge, when knowledge increases, when knowledge increases, you will not struggle. Let's read one more and we finish. Ecclesiastes 8.4. Praise God. Huh. I love the Holy Spirit. Says, For the word of a king is authority and power. Mm. And who can say to him, what are you doing? Begin from verse 1 uh, in the NLT version, I think. That brings it well. 
How wonderful to be wise. How wonderful to be wise. To analyze. To analyze. And interpret and interpret things. things. Wisdom lights up a person's face. Come on. Softening it is harshness. Praise God. Amen. Verse 2. Obey the king. Obey the king. Since you vow to God. Since you vow to God. That you would. That you would. Don't try to avoid doing your duty. Uh -huh. And don't stand with those who plot evil. Mm -hmm. For the king can do whatever he wants. Verse 4. His command is backed by great power. His command is backed by great power. No one can resist or no question one, it. No one can resist or question it. Those who obey him Come on. will not be punished. Mm -hmm. Those who are wise mm. will find a time and a way to do what is right. Verse 6. There is a time and a way for everything. Even when a, Even person, when a person is in trouble. trouble. Can you imagine? There is a way. And that's what Paul got in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He said, when even in a temptation, there is a way. There is a way. Why? Because the word of God is there. Just have the knowledge. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go back to Daniel 12 and verse 4 now. We sum it. Say, I love the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. You, Daniel, but you, Daniel, keep this prophecy. Keep this prophecy. So that book was the book of prophecy. It was about prophecy. Ah. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy. A secret. A secret. Seal up the book. Seal up the book. Until the time, until of, the the time of the end. When many will rush when here. When many will rush here there. and there. And knowledge will increase. Read amplified. Read amplified. Read amplified. Verse 4. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words, shut up the words and, seal the book, and seal the book until the time of, until the, the, end. Time of the end. Then many, shall run, then to many and shall run to and fro and search anxiously to the mountain from charge to charge. Wait, from this place to this place. What are they looking for? This and this and this. I'm looking for an answer. I'm looking for healing. I'm looking for prophecy. Yet the book is there in Maluku, just like this. <laughs> How can you go without the key to the book? You are carrying the book. You read that place. You want to open it. It is very hard. It's okay. I'll return this one. <laughs> Praise God. Many shall run from this side to that side. Then many shall run to and fro. Seek. Searching what? Anxiously through the book. And knowledge, look at this now, this is very powerful. And knowledge of God's purposes, as revealed by his prophets, shall be increased and become great. So every time we come here, we are revealing the purposes. And what happens? When you discover purpose, there is demand for knowledge to fill that purpose. That's what prophecy does. So when I come and say, I see you shining. Already you're looking at a star. You're looking at a star. And, and you're wondering, okay, the star. You, you, you're beginning to acquire knowledge about that star. And you're walking your way that direction. Already is a, a, there is an adjustment in your nut. There is a change. The way you look at things. Your, 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 your attitude is already adjusted. Say so increase in knowledge. So if you're in a prophetic ministry, you are blessed. You are just blessed. Increasing in knowledge. Hey! That's why they fight the prophetic because they just look friend. Not, but he said, I will do a marvelous work. Did you see that? I will work a wonder. He was talking about the breed of prophets. Because in the last days, I shall pour out out of my spirit upon your sons and daughters and they shall prophesy. They shall bring forth knowledge. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 14 he begins to tell you that who are prophets? People who reveal secrets and interpret divine will. He doesn't talk about that. In, we are not attacking the pastors and apostles by the way. We are just talking about increasing in knowledge. You sit in a prophetic ministry, you increase in knowledge. You, you, you prophesy, you increasing in knowledge. La copra di le pakidaba. That's why I can go to a meeting and I say, You, I see this. And that's what the person was doing. 
You see, knowledge has increased. How can that man fail? <laughs> if you learn this, you will prophesy. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. You begin to prophesy like in Jesus' name. Put your hands for Jesus. So what's going to happen? There's going to be something called anakazo. Compelled by force. By knowledge. Anakazo. Compelled by knowledge. There will be that force of knowledge. Which will directly push you towards that corner where there is a lot of wisdom. You, will, you look at a scripture and you'll be like, I cannot shift. There's still more. You dig this side. There's still more. There's, there's more under. Even on the, on the head. You understand? Anakazo. Pulling you towards it. A certain affinity for knowledge. My goodness. Book and you read it. And your eyes will open. You get the access and you can replicate 15 of them. Just by one encounter. Anakazo. Compelled. Compelled. Compelled by read. That's what compelled. That's what compelled. Paul, and it says, the love of God brings us, compels us, and with us judge. If one man died, then all of us died. That's knowledge. Increase in knowledge. Those two dimensions is by knowledge. There is one who is saying you must die for your sins. Then this one comes with a higher knowledge. He died for your sins. Anakazo. When knowledge sits you down, like the Bible says, and the spirit entered me and it made me to sit, I could not move. Then you know, Anakazo is at work on you. Hallelujah. Have you done something and you don't want to shift your leg? Even just scratching the eye like this will mean a lot. Anakazo. Compelled by it. It's deeper than being convinced compelled. You just don't know what is pushing you. you. You want to pray for one minute, but then you're going to two minutes. Zapa. Rataka. You say, okay, the time. Raboste. Likapa. Latakabaya. Something has held you. Anakazo. There's a certain knowledge that has downed in your spirit. It's going to happen. I said it's going to happen. It's a knowledge as displayed by the prophets. As purpose is being displayed. A certain knowledge comes. As you sit down and you're taking notes and you're paying attention, there is a certain knowledge that in that direction of purpose. You easily find yourself flowing. And you're so much now coined and you know, wait a minute, I am moving forward. I thought I was just somewhere this year. But now I see next year I will be very far. That's knowledge. You begin to see. You begin to see vision. Isaiah said it was a vision. Yet the land could not know. The unland could not. But when a man's spirit has been enlightened. That vision becomes so clear. What happened to the disciples? They encountered that knowledge. They arrived at the place of knowledge. You know, knowledge can vindicate a man. You will stop explaining things a lot. Just pray, Lord, I need knowledge about the prophetic. And in you will see it happen. That experience, experiential knowledge. There are certain things that you cannot teach except you experience. Praise God. Whatever I teach you, I've experienced. There are certain things I cannot be eloquent until I experience them by knowledge. Bless. You experience by knowledge. Glory to God. You witness the power. You witness the word, your word, taking action. You can come with boldness and you know this one, just one minute. 
and you go and take your tea while others are fasting for three days. The same word. <laughs> knowledge is power. It is knowledge that guides the king. Muscle. It is the just imagine the king tells himself the word I speak has a power, yet they are not charms. Knowledge tells you I'm a son of God. I carry the DNA of God. Knowledge. How far can you go? Pastor David said, if you've come here by ignorance to this far, now how far can you go by knowledge? If ignorance can bring you this far, and you're even shining, you, you can even sing songs in choir by ignorance. Now you know. How far can you go? <laughs> how far can you go? Anakazo. You must be compelled by the things. Say, I increase in knowledge. In knowledge. In the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Have you learned something? Speak in tongues. Pali Costa. Paladore ke sujo mangra dilo sakte beli. Rodea kombre de koloboda. Lebere ke telebronda gadagada. Siva. Ye pali kobona hata bere vile hida baronas. Jale pari keto bre ida pali kombra de. Kabelege bora heda maido kopala. Les kombra de. Pali gonga ri kombre ida pali. Rapa kadebe zuzo. Rata libre de compra di le zusta e lambra di le gibondo cos cofra hataka e la bradio compra di le brecade shataka baba rade compra di le barigo socto baladesh la barica tala bradile la tabra di gibo la manda gabadesh liberata baba rata kabala bayata rapa zanta you have a certain knowing you will know certain things after today. A thing will be revealed in your life. In the name of Jesus. You've entered that realm. That season. What refreshes a man is the thing that he knows. What settles a man. He says by knowledge. Shall the chambers of the house. And now we are the temple. Of the Holy Ghost. By knowledge go for knowledge. I go for the word. Because the word of God is the knowledge of God. I go for the word. I go for the word. La para pa kataba ra pa te bradigi baba ra ta kaba la baba 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 I go for the word. I go for the word. That is the higher knowledge. I go for the word. La para pa kataba ra kata la baba 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 I go for the word. I go for the word. I go for the higher knowledge. Le parata palikeba paradana masuvaga pakatala bragede shabada bahataka le predegede radondo koboriga baba 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 raba sataka ba mela pragadilo kos kopra hataka. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Allow to be taught by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you. And when He teaches you, knowledge will go high. Allow to be taught by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive. The same will teach you. It's called the Spirit of Truth. Knowledge of the truth is by the Holy Ghost. He begins to teach you one by one. You begin to discover who you are. You begin to appreciate principles. You begin to appreciate the word. <laughs> you, you, you begin to acknowledge. Like Philemon. That is gnosis. The moment you recognize and acknowledge a matter. That is knowledge. So you make up your mind to recognize and appreciate. Liparata kaba. Appreciate who you are. Appreciate where you are. Why you are following this man. Why this grace? I appreciate. Th that's knowledge. Then suddenly you discover he that who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives the reward. You will not mistake prophet for a pastor. You understand? That's knowledge. You will not fumble in the words. You will not fumble in the words.
You know exactly what you're speaking. You articulate. That's what knowledge does. Knowledge makes you eloquent. Knowledge makes you articulate. Knowledge makes you accurate. Frequent and fluent in the spirit. I have a knowledge by which I pray. I have a no, by there is a knowledge force that is carrying me. That's epic anakazo. A knowledge force. Because of what I know, I continue to do what I am doing. Anakazo. When knowledge is increased in your system, mani pali borovine ankre dolivish. No man can lie to you. He said, test the spirits by knowledge. Test the spirits. Because you have a certain knowledge. A certain knowledge about spirituality. Life is spiritual. I'm not ordinary. I'm supernatural. I'm from above. That's knowledge. Libarata <laughs> kaba. Akaba sataba. He said, I pray for you that you may all knowledge. In Colossians 1 verse 9, I pray that you may be filled with knowledge. The knowledge of his will. He said, I pray that you may be filled with his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Kara Suvakata. I pray that with knowledge. Knowledge, will. knowledge. knowledge of his will. In all spiritual. In all wisdom. Sunesis and phronesis. Pali Kabadaba. Phronesis. You put aside, you put aside every negativity. By phronesis, you take away doubts. By phronesis, you take away. By phronesis, you take away false evidence, appearing wrong, fear, filled with the knowledge of His will, in wisdom. Palakaba setakiba, palata bregade shatakaba, lipetepe. You increase in knowledge. In Jesus' name. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Being enlightened. That you may know, edo, perceive, appreciate, even at a distance, you can observe and see when it's closer. Edo. Nicodemus saw the power and he knew this was something different. By percipience. I'm telling you, you've entered into the realm of discernment. That's still knowledge. The realm of discernment. You just know certain things. I don't need to dream to know certain things. I just know. I just know. Paliko so prekete. Desire higher knowledge. Go past dreaming. Go past dreaming. I increase in wisdom. I increase in understanding. So I'm blessed. Put your hands for Jesus. Yeah. Listen. In all that you do, desire a higher wisdom. Desire a higher knowledge. There is always something higher beyond what you have. Desire it. It's a desire to walk. Walk after love and desire to prophesy. Prophet Isaac Prosper, changing lives around the world with the testimony of Jesus in powerful demonstrations of the Holy Spirit and a mighty prophetic, evangelistic, and teaching ministry. For more of this, join us for service every Tuesday at 5 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 a.m.
at the City of Wonders, opposite Reliance View Hotel, Maluku Mbali City, and find us on our media platforms on YouTube at Prophet Isaac Prosper and on Facebook at Prophet Prosper Isaac. Shalom.